Good morning, folks. This is a terrific video from NOAA's Environmental Visualization Lab focused on the vegetation changes with an outlook to tomorrow's need. It's a longer video, so you'll need to visit the lab if you want to see it all. Tropical storm in the Pacific actually will make landfall in Japan. This sets the flooding and storm surge alerts. In the Gulf, Tropical Storm Barry is making landfall in Mexico and is expected to lose power shortly. When I said in past news that Indian rains appear never-ending, all things relative, the seasonal trend is normal, but the total precipitation levels are way above normal. Spinning low should make it over Germany today. The leading edge of that cell has been frying high temperatures just ahead of the front. New Zealand low caused flooding and dropped a tornado in Northland, but expect that to move on soon with the next one headed in south of Australia. Eyes on the low in the north central states, she's the primary weather force over the U.S. right now, bringing that southern energy to mix with northern mild. Set to find equilibrium atop this region tonight, and the result of that shift is the energetic storms. Cosmic ray station in Moscow, showing a sharp uptick in neutron count. Coming to the bar toll, however, reveals elevated but not major readings. Solar wind just got interesting. While plasma temperature and speed appear poised to rise, the density had no patience. He was like, you two can sit here if you want, I'm gone. Soho confirms a 10 times normal density spike out ahead of what I expect to be speedier particles arriving this afternoon. Electron flux taking a ding this morning with the GOES magnetometer struggling to show normalcy. KP index is yet unchanged. Let's keep watch today. Primary magnetic connection to the sun is just about dead center, being quickly approached by sunspot 1776, still young and needing a bit more magnetic mixing. The only other dangerous spot is 1775 down south, still have this delta spot, but it's managed to find its own measure of calm. Tough to imagine how this is held silent with this much morphing and magnetic power. In truth, this surface feature occurring this morning might be the first sign that this large region might produce flares. We also have a new spot headed in on the south. She popped the C8 yesterday but has calmed since catching a glimpse of Earth. Folks, the umbral field is open. The corona hole is going to face us directly today. We really expect the end of this mid-watch lull. Now for those who were as confused as when I said that yesterday, we keep noticing that these quake watches containing two corona holes often have two sets of upticks, with a break in the middle. Looking back at the start of this watch, the leading southern corona hole faced Earth and we had three six-pointers in about six hours. Since then, we've kind of been between umbral openings and here we go. For example, here are all the five-pointers for the last two days. Chile and the Galapagos are the only ones you'd even look at twice. Well, here's number two. Coming in now up north, we got planetary positions favoring the uptick for three more days, and the solar wind today might be adding some flux. Shots of our star to close, eyes open. No fear at 6.55 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.